I didn't know that Jacksonville was unofficially known as the murder capital of Florida until we arrived in town to film just last week. While we were there, we visited Moncrief Avenue, a notorious road in the city known for being one of Jacksonville's deadliest streets. There has been an unprecedented number of murders that took place along this road over the years, and I truly had no idea that Jacksonville was a town plagued with such troubling issues. In 2019 alone, there were 130 documented murders in Jacksonville, and 89 of them went unsolved. That means that over half of the killers in the city that took a life last year are still out there walking the city's streets. It's always crazy to drive down these dangerous roads and to imagine the souls of murder victims that might be damned to walk them. Our night in Jacksonville began in a very normal way. We arrived in the city, headed to an apartment complex, and met with a friend. However, the night would take many dark, demonic turns, and by the end, my perspective on demons and their capabilities had been changed forever. Well, Brooke, you ready? Yep. Okay, so why don't you just first start out by introducing yourself mm -hmm. and uh, saying what you do, and you can look right into the camera. Okay, uh, my name is Brooke, and I have been practicing demonology for almost seven years now. Perfect. So what is demonology? Um, it's basically just the worship of demons. So can you explain that a little bit in more depth? Yeah, as yeah. To like um, so like when people think of worship, a lot of the times they think of like being subservient to or like uh, following blindly, that kind of stuff. But the real actual definition of worship is just to show reverence to, uh, pay your respects to. And as far as like demonology goes, that's pretty much what we do is we just show reverence, respect. Um, we'll leave offerings, incense. Uh, with me specifically, uh, I do like energy work, so I'll share my energy with him, share his energy. Uh, sometimes I'll let him like, I honestly more like most of the time I'll let him partially possess me which is where he'll like kind of like slide in and he can taste things feel senses that kind of stuff mostly it's just when I'm eating peanut butter <laughs> and bananas he really likes peanut butter and bananas um, and he really likes Reese's so like when I'm ever I'm eating a Reese's or like a peanut butter banana shake or you know peanut butter jelly sandwich he's like right there because he loves peanut butter really yeah you said peanut butter bananas yeah okay so what exactly do you do how would you describe the work that you do um a lot like reiki i mostly just do energy work i don't do like a lot of spell work or rituals or like um like a lot of other people who practice demonology they'll do like you know, they make dolls or spell bags or do like actual rituals on like certain kind of moons or certain kind of dates, that kind of stuff. I don't really do any like anything like that. I'm a very practical person. So like everything I do has some kind of like practical aspect to it. Um, so mostly I just do energy work pretty much. So I'm just gonna add that to plenty um, of each, to each entity has like their own specific likes. Like um, he likes peanut butter and bananas, sandalwood. Um, anything like earthly or uh, water-based and then like say an entity like uh, Set he likes sage or um, a Couple different things that he likes uh, and then Leviathan for example likes um, he likes lavender and See the thing is I don't really work with them too much it's mostly just g and i did actually ask them if uh if anybody wanted to participate besides him and they were like no i'm good um they're not really interested in this kind of stuff and he's only doing any of this because i asked him to um but yeah they all have their own personal likes dislikes and how they relic <laughs> um they have their own personal dislikes and likes and like what they do like to do what they don't like to do like he's mostly into like history stuff and just like teaching um, the how and why of things, which is something I'm really interested in, and really teaching you like, because truth is both subjective and objective. What I mean by that is there is one truth, but to see that truth, you have to get all the perspectives on it. Mm -hmm. And like, you can't really naturally do that. Most people can't. Um, so, one of the things that he's taught me, one of the biggest things that he's taught me, let me land. Stop doing that. Sorry. Can you not get that? 
one of the things that he is big about is history and stuff like that. So mostly what I do is I just like learn with him about all kinds of like different stuff. Like uh, right now we're learning about Irish history and stuff like that, which I happen actually to be Irish and I didn't know this. And then when I was doing research, I found out that he might have relation to um, Irish giants possibly. It's just really hard to find information on him actually, because mm -hmm. the only place he actually shows up is in Goetia. Mm -hmm. like that. There's no mention of him in like ancient history or at least not by his name. I have a couple guesses as to like what he may have been or who he may have been, but nothing like really definite. You know? So I gotta stop you here. Who is he? Who are you talking about here? Gushin. And can you explain to people online who that is? Uh, Gushin is the 11th spirit of Goetia. Um, he mostly deals with uh, telling future, past and present. He can answer any question. Um, that you ask him and he's also known to be very like a blunt to the point like truthful spirit which is actually interesting because when you go into like a lot of the descriptions of goetia spirits it's a lot of like scary stuff like oh they might do this or they might do that or you have to like trap them in a triangle or all they do will lie to you and then like for his I found it kind of funny and interesting it's like oh yeah like he's pretty much truthful and to the point and blunt and like he'll answer any question you ask him um, but they're also like, if you ask him, if you summon him to ask him a question, like that's all he's doing. Like don't try and talk to him about like a bunch of other stuff, but nothing like negative about him. It's very interesting. So how, how did, I guess, let me just ask first, and you can answer these first kind of questions mm -hmm. as, briefly so mm -hmm. we can get into the meat. How many entities would you say that you contact slash talk to frequently? Um... One mainly, and there was like a couple others that I'll talk to you like semi-frequently. And um, you said you would describe it as worshipping demons. Mm -hmm. So do you actually think that these entities, before we get into them, are the typical demon? Or no. what are you saying by that sentence? Um, so like, I just kind of use demon because it's the main term that like people know. And demonolatry just kind of formed as like a way because there's a lot of ways to work with these entities um, and a lot of them are very from a Christian viewpoint um, a lot of them are like you got to trap them and bind them and protect yourself with a circle and all that kind of stuff and demonolatry is different in that it's very like a equal relationship you're working them with like friends family um, you're not really working with them as like you're my slave, do shit for me, basically. It's more like a, a give and take. Like, I share my energy and time with you, you share your knowledge and time with me, that kind of stuff. So you guys are equals, in a way. Yeah. Being, uh, you're obviously a human, and yeah. they are not. Yeah. All of this is so interesting to me, but I have just so many questions. Yeah. Uh, let's get into them. So, which entities do you contact frequently, um, besides Gushin? Um, I contact Leviathan, Set, or most people know him as Lucifer, and sometimes I con contact uh, Bale and Alokis. And out of all of them, which one do you think is the most powerful? Uh, definitely Set. Definitely. In what way? Uh, he definitely has been able to do things that the other ones can't. And now they all, they don't like, they don't fight for power or whatever, but it's just a very obvious, like, they respect him and says kind of goes mm -hmm. well are the entities here with us now Gushin is Gushin is mm -hmm. and so Gushin you would describe as being kind of the entity demon however you would describe this that you're really like the best friends with yeah out of all of them and you yeah. stay in frequent contact mm -hmm. all you, the time and you guys are talking Com and you're hearing it mm -hmm. and he's helping you out in all these different ways mm -hmm. So if you were, if you had to think about it, where would, where would he be now? Is he like somewhere specifically in the, the house apartment or is he just kind of omnipresent? Um, well see, I have his sigil tattooed on me, so I kind of feel him with me always, but definitely his presence is not heavy down here. It's definitely more heavy up there, but it, it's kind of off for me. Cause like I said, cause I like, I literally feel him like in in me basically like all his energy flowing in me so it can be kind of hard for me to tell like specifics sometimes still training on that and olivia you said that you walked up there a little bit ago mm -hmm. and it was heavy yeah it's very heavy up though 
miles before she said this. Mm -hmm. I even told her that yeah. it was heavy up there. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we Andrew and I haven't been up there yet. Not yet, brother man, but it's coming. That's <laughs> next after this. It's coming. And I am excited for that. Real quick, by the way, I heard of somebody coughing. Yeah, that's my boyfriend. Okay, so there's somebody else here. Yes, sure. yes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So where do the entities go when they're not here with you? Do you have any idea? Not really. Wherever he wants to. Um, sometimes, for example, he'll like go with my dad. My dad says that he'll go and help him out and talk to him and stuff like that from time to time. Pretty much just wherever he wants to go. But for the most part, I think that he is near, at least nearby me. Um, and, it, and see, like near to us is different than like near to them because they can just travel wherever. so much faster than mm -hmm. we can especially when they have like a link to me like he has a link to me because i've like i said i have a sigil tattooed on me so it's like a direct instant link um and that's kind of why i can expect him to just like pop in or chime in or whatever at like any given time mm -hmm. has he said anything since we've arrived um no not really he's just listening right now okay um so how did you get started in this field and how did you get started contacting i guess the main entity that you have um so actually weirdly enough my i guess my ex-husband was like into satanism and stuff like that and for he had picked out this entity uh, gushin and then when i met him that was like when i first started like i had like the weird interaction where i was sitting in my car and there was like a blue that uh, what i thought was my ex-husband like come around the, out the house and around my car the back of my car and then, you know i got out of my car and nothing was there my boyfriend came out in his blue jacket that's why i thought it was him um, and then just like doors opening, closing, weird stuff like that when I first met him. But it wasn't until probably about, I want to say six or seven months later that I actually started practicing. Um, Cause I was still kind of like, I don't know, this is kind of like, it's the first time I, I always had been interested in like the paranormal and stuff like that. But it was the first time I'd ever really, really encountered something that like I felt like was actually there. So I didn't really know how to approach it. Um, and then I, uh, when my ex-husband went to jail, I started researching more myself. And I set up, because uh, I was by myself, so I was just kind of like, um, I set up an altar and I started meditating regularly. And that's really when I like started practicing, practicing. And was it right away when these signs started to happen or did it have to occur gradually? Um, it definitely occurred gradually, and I think that's mostly just because I wasn't sensitive to it. I did, I wasn't able to hear or sense or anything because it took me, because I was not serious about it like the first couple of years that I was practicing. I was like off and on meditating, you know, like you know once a weekend that kind of stuff, not really doing it regularly. And it wasn't really until I started meditating regularly, like three, four times a week, that I really started getting like mental images and like a buzzing kind of noise in my ear and then that gradually turned into uh, actual words thoughts that didn't seem like my own and then I felt like well maybe it's my subconscious so I did do a lot of work like clearing out my subconscious lots of deep meditations to try and like determine like what's me you know what's him does he is he real does he exist and there had been like a lot of things that had happened that kind of proved his existence but I had never really been able to talk talk so it was kind of like kind of feeling like I was going crazy a little bit <laughs> but then when I actually started talk talking to him uh, I had some very surreal very like physical sensations thing like I could definitely tell that he was real um, and I did have some like sensations of energy and stuff like that when I was first practicing which is kind of what kept me going because I'm a very practical person so if I don't have something I'm just gonna be like eh you know but it was the feel of energy the fact that I could like feel some kind of weird sensation flowing through my body that kind of kept me more and more interested and in wanting to like pursue and be able to actually talk to him one day so you haven't been doing this your whole life though no no definitely and this is not. kind of like you got thrust into this world through someone else yeah. and then it's become like a life passion for you and something that you really rely on yeah so what what do you think is your favorite part about having these entities to contact and like the things that they bring to you um learning and then just having like different perspectives um it's very interesting the way that they see things it's like completely not how humans 
see things at all. It's very interesting to me because I like seeing different perspectives of things. Like just for example, one time um, I was trying to meditate and I was like really, really hot because I was sitting in my closet with another place and I had set my altar up in my closet and uh, I was meditating and it was just hot and I was sweating and I was like, I need a hair tie or something. Couldn't find a hair tie anywhere because I had short hair up until that point so I didn't keep any. And so I'm like running around my house trying to find something to put my hair up and I just get him like pushing me into the bathroom into like this uh, area where I had like a basket weave thing made out of like metal and uh, basket weaving and he wanted me to actually break <laughs> the basket and take the metal prong out of the basket and use that as a hair tie. Yeah, so just an example of like the complete difference in thought. Like I would never break that for a hair tie, but he, mm -hmm. that, him, that's totally practical. He's like, you're hot, you need a hair tie, there you go. Mm -hmm. So just very different thinking and that's really interesting to me. Different way that the thoughts are processed, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Coming from a human versus yeah, way some different. sort of an energy, elemental spirit, or not even a spirit, whatever you, yeah. whatever term you'd like to use to describe these entities. Yeah, entity is fine, yeah. So have you ever had any frightening communications or things that have happened to you on this journey like from the entities not not really you know oh I saw a ghost like more like have you ever felt negative energy that's been brought in through these circles that you've opened or um, anything like that no the only times I have is like when I inserted myself into like another person's situation who was already experiencing negative stuff all my interactions with my entities have been like uh, positive and um, and not positive in like the happy-go-lucky always either. Sometimes it's, it's just like I have a thought process or whatever and my thought process is f***ed up and he chimes in, you know, that's a f***ed up thought process. Like really reevaluate that, that kind of stuff. To me, that's positive because it encourages growth, um, which actually, funnily enough, uh, he has an N um, and it roughly translates to help me grow. Hmm. So when you say you hear them, do you physically hear like a voice inside of your head um or is it like it's more like thoughts yeah like a thought that pops yeah, it's not it's more an like actual thoughts with like a slight tonal difference like his is um a little bit deeper than my own thoughts um and more of like a male voice it's not like you know someone actually like talking in your ear mm -hmm. um although uh, my my dad has experienced stuff like that where he's actually like said stuff to him out loud um I haven't had anything like out loud, out loud, but it's mostly, it's mostly just like thoughts in my head. So let's go through the paranormal activity that you have experienced since the beginning of this journey. Can you spell out the different incidents yes. that have occurred? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So the first one would have been when I was sitting in my car and had that blue orb fly around my car and then like doors opening and closing in my house. And then um, there really were things moving, keys and stuff like that. There really wasn't anything like serious until I moved into my first apartment and had my friend was over and him and his girlfriend were spending the night and uh, she was scared because she could kind of sense his energy and she had had a negative thing attached to her so she was like kind of freaking out and her boyfriend was like trying to act macho and stuff so he like challenged him and uh, Obviously, I wasn't there for it, but I got woken up to them freaking out at like 3 o'clock in the morning because apparently when he challenged him, he opened all the doors in the kitchen, all the cabinets, and slammed them shut and then started stomping around like where they were sleeping and stuff like that. And then this is the part that I saw when they woke me up and I came out, there was huge black handprints going up the wall, over his sigil, and then onto the ceiling. Um, and then... After that, um, I had a friend who was living with us who had negative intentions, I guess, I didn't even know about. And uh, we left, everybody left, and when we came back, all his stuff was stacked on his bed in a triangle. Um, so something has crawled on the wall? Handprints all the way up the wall. What do you, what do you the think? Ceiling. What do you think caused the handprints? Oh, definitely Gushin. Um, but I mean, how do you think that that happened? Like, do you have any theory as to how um, they appeared? I know that I definitely know that they can physically interact with things so I think he was trying to send a message to them like you know this is my house you know don't disrespect me in my house mm -hmm. please putting his hand on the wall mm -hmm. physically kind of showing that. yeah like hey I'm here don't yep. disrespect me because since I started working with him I, kinda, I made it well known like you know I'm coming to you for like knowledge and help and stuff like that so like my 
house is your house. You know, I respect you, you respect me. Um, and then one particular time, um, me and my ex got into an altercation and my ex was actually choking me and Gushin came in and ripped him off of me and my ex was completely shocked, obviously, did not expect that, um, which is kind of weird because he was the one who introduced me to it, a little bit weird. I don't think he was as serious as he claimed to be. Um, and then another time, one time I was in my car and it was raining and I was doing 50 and see, that was 45. Um, and someone pulled out to me. I mean, like I was coming up to an intersection and I was maybe a car length away from the intersection and someone pulled out in front of me. There is no way that I should have been able to stop, especially because it just started raining and the roads were wet. And I slammed on my brakes and I started skidding and I was like, I'm gonna rear end this person. Without a doubt, I'm rear ending them. And right before I rear ended them, my car slammed to a stop. Um, and then when I started meditating and more regularly and he started showing me images, um, he showed me a lot of things, uh, lots and lots of things, um, underground places and like kind of like my brain and then like zoomed out into the world and then showed like how the world was like interconnected kind of like nerves. Besides like images and stuff that he showed me, there wasn't really too much until I started doing yoga and meditation regularly and I got like really sensitive to energy and I started working with three other entities and I was uh, meditating one time and I was like laying on my back in the middle of my ritual room and uh, I felt hands on the top of my head in both of my hands and on my feet. Hands, like as clear as day, open my eyes, I still feel hands like, like someone was holding my hand in my, my body. Um, and then, actually strangely enough, like I said, uh, they have a lot, they actually have been a focal point of changing my life in several occasions. I was actually kind of getting a weird feeling from my ex-husband and deciding if I was going to leave him. And I was asking for advice. And because uh, my ex had, at the time, had kind of manipulated me into thinking that G was like buddy-buddy with him, um, G was telling me to leave and I thought that was my subconscious. So I was like rejecting it, rejecting it, rejecting it. and then. Uh, set came in <laughs> and he literally came in and he shoved me out of my body and that was that was a really weird experience and it, I felt like kind of like a string connected to my body but I was definitely like outside of my body like over here and then he pointed out like okay so this is how you tell when I'm talking this is how you tell when your subconscious talking this is how you tell when you're talking like energy wise um, he pointed out like the chakras the different chakras that would activate different things and how when my subconscious would talk no chakra would activate and that's kind of how I actually learned to tell the difference between like what's me what's my subconscious and what's them and then I mean it's pretty, that's pretty much the major ones so a lot of activity and a lot of times it seems to be physical which mm -hmm. looks interesting because a lot of times in esoteric theory and the kind of whatever you would call uh, contacting entities that it, there have been so many names for it over time. Yeah. A lot of people have claimed that it's strictly in the mind, mm -hmm. but with your case, there is actually something that's manipulating objects in the real world, like mm -hmm. causing handprints on a wall. Yeah. What, why, I mean, my, I guess my question is, um, when does the physical stuff seem to happen? Is there like a pattern to it or um, is it very random? physical stuff as far as like him actually like touching objects and stuff like that uh at first i think at first it was kind of definitely to get me like interested and just like aware that he was there um but usually now the days uh the only times there's like really physical stuff is like when i moved into a new place and he was like opening all the doors and stuff like that and exploring or like if someone is like threatening towards me what do you think was the clearest communication you've ever received um, like the most striking, I guess, maybe accurate or... Um, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Do like, you have like one or two examples of something? Yeah, like um, I met a friend through an occult group and just was able to like 
I guess he had been practicing since he was like really young and he's like in his 40s. Um, and I was just able to confirm like a lot of stuff that he was taught and fill in like details that he didn't have and just like confirm answers that he, he would know but I wouldn't. Um, and then just like a couple times like there's been times when like my friends my friend was having like an emotional breakdown and like he was like hey reach out to her and I reached out to her like hey are you okay and she was like oh yeah I was actually in the middle of having a panic attack but, like that kind of stuff wow. um, and besides like him throwing my ex-husband off of me and uh, just stuff like that so you learn from these entities mm -hmm. is that why you choose to contact and yeah. stay in contact with G yeah just because you're learning things. Mm -hmm. like, what, what would you say you're learning? What, what's the benefit of the, co um, the communication? I'm learning the how and why of things. I'm learning to the history of things, the behind the scene things, um, and learning more in depth about like history. Like I learned a lot about, um, for example, how Christianity manipulated humanity and like took their gods and stuff like that. And uh, I learned a lot about how they were involved in like Egyptian language and even in uh, like Latin and stuff like that and then um, also learning most importantly is how to be a better person in general um, how to love myself and strengthen myself and kill out my toxic traits and actually like learn to see things from different perspectives especially when discussing like really anything where someone's going to be like really opinionated. Um, I really have learned through him to see other sides because he's also known as like a diplomat and one of his things is to like see all the sides of the situation um, and he's really taught me how to like try and see all the different sides. So like when I think of a situation most people think of like one maybe two perspectives at most and I'm thinking of like 10, 15 at a time. It get a little overwhelming but it's definitely interesting to me. I'm a huge like knowledge nerd so. So you're really happy you're in contact. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a completely positive thing for 100%. you. 100%. Never positive. scary. Nope. You want people online to think that this is not the demon worship mm -hmm. of yesteryear that people yeah. are confusing for what you're doing. Yeah absolutely. And yet you still call it demon worship. Yeah it's pretty much just what it's known by. Um, they don't care that much about it. Mm -hmm. They any like acknowledgement of them is good to them in a way I think and I think that um, they do want people to realize that they're like not the scary entities and stuff like that but at the same time they're not like super like uh, you know I'm offended because people have those biases and stuff like that because when I first started working with him I definitely had biases like I was like I'm kind of afraid you know like he's supposed to be the scary demon and stuff and then my sick ex-husband who was like Satanist or whatever definitely played up that like scary factor and that was when I started really talking to him and I started realizing that how he ex described him was not how he was at all that was when I really started realizing that like they're not demons but the term is still like good to use and that people know what you're talking about it's basically. a colloquial term mm -hmm. so it's basically what people know and yep. you can kind of describe it to them exactly um, so, have you ever had any friends, family members that have reacted adversely to what you do? Like maybe very religious people or anybody who has had a negative reaction to you doing these communications? Um, most of the people have accepted it. Um, and I think that's just because uh, over the years like I've become a better person and my life has gotten better so obviously like it's not all negative but there has been a couple occasions um, like when my friend Megan for the first time came over to my house she wouldn't come in my house because she could feel him and she was freaked out because she had only had experiences with negative entities and I had like convinced her like yo he's cool like you know he's not gonna hurt you or anything like it's cool and then my friend who is no longer my friend which I think has a little bit to do with this um she wanted to find out if he was real and so she took acid and decided she was gonna meditate and try and open her third eye and contact him and that went really poorly um something else came in and like convinced her that G meant God and just like all kinds of stuff and she ended up in uh, the psych ward for a couple days yeah she ended up going to the hospital and then ended up in a psych ward for like wow. two nights yeah and then uh her parents didn't want her around me or anything like 
that mm. I think she didn't want to be around me because of that. Um, and I think that definitely like tainted her view of him, even though it wasn't him. And uh, I wasn't sensitive enough then because I had only been practicing for like a year and a half. Um, I wasn't sensitive enough then to like really like understand what was going on with her enough to actually help her. So um, definitely if like you try jumping in and just like don't know what you're doing and just open yourself up to everything, you can definitely have some like negative experiences that way. But your family is supportive? Yeah. Your friends, everybody? Uh, yeah, uh, the ones that aren't I am no longer in contact with. That's a good policy because you got to do you in life. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, one of my closest friends actually, I, I don't know, she, one of the, one she said that she wouldn't want to be my friend anymore, one of the things she said was that like, I, I had a warped view of reality and that I was delusional and all kinds of stuff like that, which I don't really like. The only thing I shared with her was just like stuff I was researching about history, so I don't know. You know, uh, people are scared of what they don't know, but like as far as that, anybody who I don't know, didn't take it seriously and didn't like accept that it was such a serious part of my life. I pretty much cut off. Um, and my family actually is on my dad's side is heavily Catholic and they all know that I work with an entity and I kind of sat them down. They did ask me one time because I had posted some stuff on Facebook. They were like, do you wish up the devil, blah, blah, blah. You know, do you work with Satan? And I'm like, technically, because I work with Lucifer, but no, it's not what you're thinking, and I just kind of like explain the nuances to them, and they are pretty much like, okay, whatever, and then my dad actually, in like the, like two, a year and a half ago, two years ago, I kind of like slowly started introducing it to him and talking to him about it, and my dad is like one of my closest friends, actually, we're like best friends, we talk to each other all the time, um, and he was very like wary of it at first, because he was heavily Catholic, but then I asked him, I was like, you know, I like to share everything with my dad. Like, I want to share this with my dad, help him understand. And so then he came in and started working with him and giving my dad signs and slowly working with him. And now my dad is like fully on board. And like, he actually wanted to be here tonight to talk to you about his experiences. Oh man. But his, my stepmom's car ended up breaking down. So he's fixing that. But Weird um, timing. I know, right? It's weird timing. A little smart car, but um. What? So I'm trying not to cough in here. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <coughs> oh, that's so much better. <laughs> that's going in the video. Okay, right back to it. But yeah. So, two questions here. So you, first, you described earlier um, talking about how you allow the entities to possess you mm -hmm. and saying the Catholic angle kind of reminded me to mm -hmm. ask you about that. How does that work? How does that happen yeah. when that, when you do it? Yeah. Um, it's kind of like accepting his energy into my body and it kind of feels like a backseat driver just kind of like slides in and like coats me in his energy and like I can feel his energy pulsing through me. Um, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Now when, when I first started uh, meditating and stuff, my ex had said something to the likes to like, oh, he could like fully control you or whatever. And, uh, and I was like, okay, do it then, you know, like do it. And he actually did do it for about five seconds. I couldn't move or anything. But then he released me immediately and was just like, he wanted me to. But other than that, he's never done anything like that. Uh, mostly it's, it's more so like, almost like guiding hands on my shoulders, like directing me in the right direction or like s sliding in like a second driver and just kind of like pointing me, like a feeling, a sensation of like pointing me in the direction. It's never fully possessed. Can you do that at any time, or does it have to be very specific? No, I can pretty much do it whenever. So, on that same note, can you explain kind of how you like to contact G? Mm -hmm. Like, what the process is, why you do it in the ritual room, like what exactly goes down? I actually don't even have to do it in the ritual room. I can pretty much do it anywhere. Um, but I pretty much just meditate and enter like a slight trance state and then pull his energy into my body. Um, but I don't even have to really enter too much of a trance state to talk to him and to connect with him. I think that is partially because I have his sigil tattooed on me, so it's like a constant direct link. So I can pretty much talk to him whenever. Now if I want like a serious answer to stuff, I usually will go into like a trance mode and actually meditate for a while to try and get that answer and get like multiple confirmations of that answer. So do you think what we're going to do tonight, the reason why you contacted mm -hmm. us, me really, um, and we got introduced is because you wanted to 
trying to test out to see if any of the tools that we have can actually, you know, validate what's happening. So are you, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think we're going to get responses? I, I think so. Yeah, I definitely think so. What, what do you think is going to happen? Um, Spirit box stuff. Um, um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I'm hoping that he's going to set off your guys' meters and give responses in the spirit box or whatever else. So, at the end of the day, what, what message do you want people to take away from viewing this video? What do you want to say to people online? Since this is your platform <laughs> now, you can say literally anything. Um, we're not what media and the world portrays us to be. We're not scary. We're usually really good people who help people and spread positivity and the entities we work with aren't scary monsters they are just misunderstood entities that have been demonized throughout history and what do you say to the people online who are going to be angry that you talk to demons what's your opinion on that i don't really care about their opinion <laughs> they can, they're going to be angry no matter what i do really it's going to if it's not this it'll be something else so but here's here's you as an example you're living life, you're healthy, you're happy, you have a great house, great mm -hmm. everything, and yet you talk to demons. Mm -hmm. And that's way more than, I mean, some people get mad at us for even going to demonic places, but you are a shining example of someone that can actually have contact mm -hmm. and is living an amazing life. So yep. I'd say that you are a testament to that exactly. train of thought being just nullified because yeah. even you, a person who has demons that enter your body and you know are surrounding you and making marks on the walls and everything but you're still happy yeah absolutely and i'm i am way happier than when i first started practicing my mental health is way way better my financial status is way better my whole entire life it's like not just the 180 like a complete 360 flip difference you have anything else that you'd like to add to this video anything um no i don't know just stay open and search for knowledge well, that's perfect. I guess it's time to go see the ritual room and right. begin our communication. Sounds good. Thanks, buddy. Uh, there you are. There you are. <laughs> <laughs>